guys, I'm Tina and welcome to Well and Tasty, where I share fun and easy recipes with simple ingredients that you can whip up in your own kitchen. Today's recipe I'm really excited about because it's a request from you guys on Instagram. So I posted this picture about samosas and you really seemed to love that picture and quite a few of you requested a recipe. So I thought why not just edit this video and share with you guys so that you can start whipping up some samosas in your own homes. Now this is definitely not an authentic recipe. Um, I'm definitely taking some shortcuts and I will share that with you. Samosas are really labor intensive and ain't nobody got time for that right now. <laughs> so I'm going to show you my shortcuts to get you to still enjoying your samosas. And I'm also trying to make it a little bit more healthy, but still tasty as always. So here's a fun fact for you guys. I was born and raised in Cameroon, but I, you know, lived in Kenya for three years and I ate a lot of samosas during that time but I actually never got to learn how to make one or even attempted to make one. Then in 2017, I went to Cape Town, South Africa, and I took a cooking class with this lady, um, I think her name was Zany, and it was in bull cap, such a fun experience. Um, if I can find her information, I'll leave it for you guys in the description box in case you are in Cape Town and you're looking for a cooking class as well. She was a lot of fun. And this recipe is pretty much what I learned in that class. It's pretty much her recipe, honestly. And it just cuts a lot of the labor intensive parts of making samosa. And I hope that you guys enjoy it. So I'll stop rambling and let's just get into this recipe. Okay, so we're going to begin by dicing up some onions and you can see my method for slicing up my onions for that perfect dice. Then we're also gonna chop some parsley. And next up, we're gonna hit up some oil. So I'm typically always using avocado oil. Add one pound of ground turkey and spread it out so that it starts cooking. Then we're going to start layering in our spices. So I'm adding half a teaspoon of curry, cumin, coriander, smoked paprika, and then just finish that up with some salt. Stir everything and continue to cook until your turkey is no longer pink and all the liquid in the skillet has evaporated. Then we move and set aside and allow to cool. To your ground turkey, add your chopped onions as well as your parsley and mix well to combine. Next, we're gonna make our slurry. So you're just gonna mix some flour and water into a paste and this will really help form that glue that holds the samosa together. For a samosa pastry, this is where you get my abbreviated samosa tip. One of the benefits of living in New York City is that I have access to all the cultures and I get this crispy and flaky samosa pastry from my local Indian grocer. But if you don't have access to him, you can always use filo dough, which is common in most supermarkets. Follow the instructions to thaw out your pastry and then cover it with a wet towel to keep it moist. To fold your samosa, you're gonna separate one sheet and then fold over to form a triangle and then fold up to form a cone. This will create a nice pocket for your turkey. So stuff the turkey filling and then you're going to tightly roll again into triangles. And as you do this, at the end of it, you're gonna find that you have a few flaps left over. And this is where the glue comes in. So just apply your glue onto those excess flaps, and then you're gonna fold over and secure your samosa. And that's it, you just wrapped up your first samosa. Okay, I know it was a lot. So let's see that again from another angle. So fold into a triangle, 
fold up to form your cone. Stuff the cone with the turkey filling and tightly roll again into triangles. Apply the glue to the extra flaps that will secure it, fold over to keep it nice and tight. This is probably the most time consuming part, but once you get into a rhythm, it really gets easy and you can make this a family activity by getting everyone to help. It will help them appreciate the samosas even more. At this point, you can choose to fry it, um, but I'm making this a little bit healthier and since I'm eating them so much, I really do indulge in these, I'm going to bake them instead. So grease up a baking tray and then arrange the samosas in one single layer, brush some oil on top, and then we're just going to pop it in the oven, bake for about 30 minutes till it's lightly golden brown. You can bake at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. After 30 minutes, you end up with this beauty. I whipped up a spicy chimichurri sauce to serve with it and my god let me tell you just trying to film this little segment I think I ate about five of these samosas and when I was done I ate another five they are that good <laughs> And that's pretty much it folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and you give it a try. If you do, don't forget to tag me on Instagram at well and tasty. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, share the video with your circles, your friends and families. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care guys, bye.